Is this iron gonna be the biggest iron of 2022? I've got the four iron, six iron, eight, and wedge. We're gonna hit all of these and test and see if this is gonna be the hottest iron for next year. So what makes it a great iron? So for me, it's gotta look good, hasn't it? It's gotta feel good. It's gotta obviously perform. But I think for me as a custom fitter, and obviously I see different types of golf from front of me, I'm also thinking this type, this iron I've got in my hand, it's gonna suit quite a wide variety of golfers as well. Um, who are looking for all those aspirational things, you know, want to maybe have a club in the bag that potentially a tour player is using, yet they need that forgiveness, but they also want a little bit of that power as well as that lovely feel off the club face. And for me, this iron, I feel, is going to provide all of those. But we're going to take a little bit of a closer look today in this particular video. So the iron I'm actually referring to is the brand new Mizuno Pro 223 iron. Now, some of you may have guessed I had a Mizuno in my hand because I've recently just done the review video of these. But I think from my test and I think this out of the three uh, new Mizuno Pro irons that they are offering, I think this is going to be the bigger audience here. This is going to be ticking a lot of boxes for a lot of golfers, I would feel, out there. So, as I mentioned, I've got four iron, six, eight, and wedge. We're going to start off with a wedge and work our way through these irons and give you a little bit of feedback with each one. That feels fantastic. So just before we carry on, maybe just post a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts, you know, what makes it a perfect iron for you? Again, I think, you know, you're personal, aren't you? And the needs that you need out of a set of golf clubs. So let me know your thoughts below. So shaping of this pitching wedge down by the golf ball, and this is what Mizuno said, that they've sort of made some improvements on this in, in, from the previous model, which this is replacing the MP20 MMC iron. Is, is a little bit more compact. So um, the whole sort of strap line around the 223 iron is uh, built for distance, sized for tour. So tour, you know, they want to get this in the tour player's hands is probably their aim here. So this wedge now is very compact in its head and it's absolutely stunning, the shape of the head. I mean, it's not small, don't get me wrong. You know, it's not like absolutely tiny behind there. It's just a little bit more compact. We've got a super bevel top edge there, which is providing a little bit more of a thinner, look to the top line even though it's not massively thin looks superb behind the ball and it feels superb as well to be honest i mean it's such a good feel it's not explosive off the club face there we know we've got that grain flow forged and this is where we've got a little bit of a split in the 223 model so from that four iron up and two seven iron we've got like a, the cromoli, forged cromoli uh, material. And then when you move into the eight iron through to the to the gaff wedge, we've got into the uh, grain flow forged, um, which is a 1025 pure select carbon steel. So I'm gonna see if there's a difference of feel as we transition from the two sort of materials in a way as we go through. Yeah, I mean, that feels like the bladed, you know, a pure bladed iron. The, the sound is, is stunning. The feel is excellent. You can see those last two, uh, just those slightly better strikes there. Just gone a little bit further than that first one. Again, that's more me than the club itself, obviously. So this picture wedge is coming in at 46 degrees. So it's, I would say, is, is fairly uh, traditional, really, on the lofting of a pitching wedge nowadays. We've got a super sort of beveled off back edge to this. So we've got a very much of that tall sort of thickness of that sole there, even though the actual sole width is, is, is wider. We've got it sort of chamfered off at the back. So, you know, that's a bit of that turf interaction. And the feedback's there. I mean, that wasn't perfect, but the feedback is there. The feel is there. Is that carrying out out there? We're around that 125 area, yeah. So that's quite sort of typical 125 to 130 for me with a pitch wedge around that 46 degrees. Okay, so switching into the eight iron. So 36 degrees of loft and the eight iron still has that 1025 pure select carbon steel. So we should still get that very similar feel to what we've just seen in the pitch wedge. And that eight iron into the short iron into that pitch wedge, we don't have that micro slot inside the head. So again, we'll, when we move into the six iron and the four iron, we'll have that uh, slot in there. So again, see how that just changes possibly the feel if it does at all, or even the sound to be honest. But again, great looking club, a little bit of offset. It, it's a sort of medium top line, but it looks thinner than what it actually is. Again, it's just that beveled back edge, so it doesn't look overly thick. A little bit of a healy one, wasn't the greatest of strikes. Accuracy not too bad though. Might be the longest of shots that. That's a better strike. That's a beautiful ball flight, beautiful feel. Stunning sound to that as well. Probably get a little bit more on that with that better strike. 
Yeah, a little bit. So these are available, obviously four iron all the way through to gap wedge and right hand and listen for left, you left handers out there, left hand set available and it's not a blended set either. So last year we saw a blended set and that's all you had the options of. This year, your two, two, three, you can get from four through to gap, left hand, not blended. So I think that's ticking a bit of a box for hopefully you left handers in comparison to previous season. Again, that's a stunning flight and feel. I've just pulled that a little bit. That's typically my little sort of miss I have. Obviously they go a little bit longer there when you get that pull. So as with the whole set of this 223, we've got that uh, copper underlay, which we have seen in the MP20. That's carrying on into the new Mizuno Pro series. So that copper uh, layer in there, providing that feel. And then that's coated with this nickel chrome that we see as a, as a finish on top. So that's helping with that, that sort of feel in a way, that copper being a little bit softer. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Again, that was a little bit heel. I get the feedback through the actual head, but the, the sensation, the feel, the sound, absolutely stunning. So switching into the six iron. So 28 degrees of loft in the six iron. Now we are moving away from that um, pure select carbon 1025. We're now into a forged chromoly material. And then we now have that micro slot in the head. Obviously we can't see it, it's inside. Again, that's going to be helping with ball speed. So face thickness on these irons are 2.4 millimeters thick, which is actually very, very thin and is thinner than in comparison to the JPX91 forged iron, which is a little bit more of a powerful iron, isn't it? So six iron, it's a slimish top line. Again, that bevel top edge does make it look quite a blady sort of look, look but it's that it's quite a longish sort of blade length now so it doesn't look scary behind that golf ball and again for me this is where it can tick a few boxes for quite a number of golfers really Ooh, that's a little bit low in the face but that's flown up and away so talk about you know these lofts and 28 degrees with a six iron it's a reasonable loft nowadays isn't it you know obviously they're trying to promote a little bit of power with this but also a little bit of that playability with this iron as well so yeah the slightly stronger you know the seven iron and this is going to come in at 32 mostly sort of tend to work around a sort of seven iron loft 32 degrees so slightly strong from maybe the traditional sort of 34 mark but it's not ridiculous that you sometimes you see in the in the sort of low or under 30 degrees though in some of them some of them are really strong aren't they oh that's a good strike that's a good strike a little bit left to right on that shape but that's a really good connection now this is what i wanted to sort of have a little look at transitioning from that pure head no slot that grain flow uh, carbon into this chromoly with a slot. We may see some changes of feel and sound. And yes, there is. That's a little bit more, it's not ridiculous, don't get me wrong, a little bit more clickier compared to that sort of solid one piece head. Ooh, just pulled a little bit, but that flight is lovely. That is just up and out but it's just that little bit different on the acoustics. So you are changing that sound slightly as you are changing your irons, you know, from that progression from that four iron up to seven iron, then you move into that eight. There's some slightly different feels there. You probably get used to that and you might not even notice it. Some, some people, you know, everybody's a little bit different on the way they feel the golf club. Is it, is it a, is it a complete game changer for this? No, you know, I think it's still a fantastic feel. It's a great look. That's lovely. That is really, I'm really enjoying hitting that. Feels good. Okay, okay, so moving it into the four iron, this is the lowest lofted club they offer. They don't offer a three iron in this. If you're looking three iron, possibly then you're into that the Mizuno Pro fly high sort of area or potentially hybrids, aren't we? So 22 degrees of loft, four iron. Again, we're, we're in that chromoly head, forged. We've got that uh, micro slot in there. Again, looks super behind the ball. It's, it's, it does look slimish on that top line, which it's not, but it, it is it, the way it looks it. So that beveling. Ooh, that's a good time. I didn't flush that, that's a bit heel. It's just peeling a fraction. But I'll tell you what, that flighted very easy. I wasn't expecting that to fly as high as that from that uh, particular strike of hip. So you're probably thinking, right, are these irons aimed at me? So what level of golf do you think would be using this type of iron? I think this is a big sort of, can throw the net over this a little bit. I could see, you know, like say tour players using this quite easily. You know, I think I could see sort of mid handicappers using this. So it's a big spectrum there. 
you know, if you're a decent ball striker, and you don't have to be absolutely on the money here, but I think if you're a fairly decent ball striker, but you're looking for that real nice look, that traditional look, nothing too big offset, chunky top line, massive sort of head down by that golf ball, this is definitely worth looking at. Again, you've got to go and try these, haven't you? Test them yourselves. Obviously, some different shaft options, as, as I would always say, you know, make sure you go and get fit, get them dialed in for you and your club delivery. Oh yeah. That's a, that's a joy to hit. Again, it's just that little bit clickier compared to those short irons, but that, you know, do you know what? In those longer irons, that doesn't bother me too much. Oh, wow. Now, I believe Luke Donald's put this four iron in the 223 straight in his bag, and I, I can see why. <laughs> that's such an easy club to launch. I think he's put it in there just for that little bit of that higher launch in that longer iron. You know, I think he's a blade. Player. I think he's got MP20s at the top of me, I can't remember. But he has put the 223 iron, it probably just gives it that little bit more launch there for that longer shot, that four iron into the green. So you can probably just see those dispersion rings there, pretty, pretty, pretty sort of typical, you're gonna sort of find there. Maybe that four iron just drop it in a tiny bit, I haven't hit those flush, but sometimes you would see that, as you, what I would with a lot of golfers, as you work through into your longer clubs, the dispersion rings tend to get a little bit tighter, don't they? Just cause it's a little bit of a tougher club to hit in terms of being more consistent. That wasn't perfect on the strike, but it's up and away. I'd take that on the golf course. Okay, so is this the biggest iron in for 2022? Difficult to say, because a lot of the brands haven't launched, but I tell you what, it is gonna be up there with the best, best of them.